So this multifactorial model for chronic disease MSIDs, I'm going to show you today how multiple factors on the MSIDs map can be addressed to decrease inflammation and reduce disabling symptoms. So the first point of the 16 points on the map are infections. We talked yesterday about bacterial infections. Many of my patients have several of these infections simultaneously. Again, not addressed in the double-blind placebo-controlled studies by the NIH. Multiple parasites, not just Babesia microti, but Babesia wa one duncani, and intestinal parasites, because Babesia is suppressing your ability to clear the body of other parasites published in the medical literature. There are viruses that are getting into people, like the Heartland virus and Powassan virus, which is rapidly increasing in the United States, and then there's Candida and other fungi. The second point is immune dysfunction. Many of my patients have anti-nuclear antibodies, yet their double-stranded DNA, the most sensitive marker for lupus, is negative. When you treat the Lyme, the ANAs go down to normal. They may have positive rheumatoid factors, and the rheumatologist will put them on steroids or methotrexate or Enbrel or Rava. Yet, they're CCP negative. They don't have cyclic citrullated peptides, which is the most sensitive marker for rheumatoid arthritis. You treat the Lyme disease, the rheumatoid factors go down to normal. And then you can get patients who are much worse when they're HLA, DR2, or 4 positive. Number three, inflammation. I'll show you in the literature by Dr. Brian Fallon and many researchers that we have tremendous amounts of inflammatory cytokines produced in this disease, which makes people sick. It was published in the medical literature and the psychology literature years ago called the sickness syndrome. When you get a virus and the flu-like symptoms and you feel achy and tired, it's from these same inflammatory cytokines. The fourth point is toxicity. There are multiple chemicals getting into our bodies. The CDC and the Environmental Protection Agency in the United States has done studies. There was one by the CDC back in 2003, $6.5 million study, showed that there are 116 different pollutants getting into people's bodies. They mimic many of the symptoms of Lyme disease, as I'm about to show you. Then we have problems with mold. We're finding that two-thirds of our resistant patients are showing up with mold toxins, aflatoxins, ochratoxins, trichothecenes. There are other neurotoxins like quinolinic acid, that it's not a question of just giving IV rocephin into the brain to help someone with Lyme disease who has neurological problems, you need to clear out these toxins and that detoxification is essential in getting these people better. Then there are food allergies that show up with leaky gut. I'll show you again the common denominator that if you have inflammation in the gut with leaky gut, whether it's gluten sensitivity or otherwise, you get the same inflammatory cytokines that are produced causing people to be sick. The sixth is nutritional and enzyme deficiencies. We're finding up to 25% of our patients are mineral deficient in zinc. Zinc is needed to decrease inflammation in the body based on NIH studies. The seventh is mitochondrial dysfunction. When you have these free radicals and oxidative stress from chronic infections, they can damage the mitochondria because the DNA are protected by histones in the body, but the mitochondria are not. And this can lead to chronic fatigue, to nerve dysfunction and also to cardiac problems and even cardiomyopathy. And there are patients that we've reversed their cardiomyopathy, treating their Lyme disease and mitochondrial dysfunction. The eighth is psychological disorders. Lyme has been published in the medical literature by Brian Fallon and other researchers at Columbia University that it imitates every psychiatric diagnosis that you can see in the world. From schizophrenia to OCD to post-traumatic stress, every one of them can be caused by Lyme disease. The ninth point is neurological dysfunction, with its tremendous amounts of neurological problems in people with Lyme, as you heard from Joe this morning, and especially neuropathy. At least 70% of my patients have peripheral neuropathy, and neuropathy of the autonomic nervous system, which causes POTS, is a whole other problem, causing tremendous problems why people don't get better. The tenth, the endocrine disorder. When you get these inflammatory cytokines, they affect the hypothalamic pituitary axis. It can shut down the production of pituitary hormones. So men will come in with low luteinizing hormone and low testosterone. We will get 40% of our patients with low adrenal hormones, where their DHEA cortisol levels are low. If you don't have enough cortisol, you can't fight infection properly. There was one of my patients who was sick for 13 years, had seen multiple physicians. He was ready to literally throw himself off a bridge from suicide. We found that he had Lyme disease, he had drenching sweats, he had Babesia, he had Bartonella, but he also had low cortisol, and he was very resistant to antibiotics. 
But within one week of replacing his cortisol, he went from literally almost zero to 75% normal and felt wonderful just from replacing hormones in someone that had chronic Lyme disease with co-infections. You'll then see sleep disorders. When you don't fall asleep, and Lyme patients have a tremendous difficulty falling asleep, they don't fall asleep and they keep waking up in the middle of the night, you get an increase in interleukin-6 production. So already with Lyme disease, you have TNF-alpha, IL-1, IL-6, then you're not sleeping, you create more inflammatory cytokines leading to more symptoms. If you don't get these patients to sleep, no matter how many antibiotics you give them, they will not get better in general. The twelfth is autonomic nervous system dysfunction. Very few doctors will check patients with sitting and standing blood pressures to find out if they have symptoms of POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Lyme disease as a neuropathy will affect the autonomic nervous system. You can get it affecting the gut with gastroparesis. It will affect the bladder. It will affect your blood pressure and pulse. And what patients come in and say is, I'm tired, I'm dizzy, I can't think. Now, those are symptoms of Lyme disease, but they're also symptoms of autonomic neuropathy. If you give them salt, you give them fluids, you may want to give them fludrocortisone, fluoroneph, midadrine, all of a sudden, their symptoms get better. Again, not published in the double-blind placebo-controlled studies. They will have GI disorders like dysbiosis, parasites, inflammatory bowel disease. In inflammatory bowel disease, like Crohn's, you will get increased levels of these inflammatory cytokines. When you get Lyme on top of it, the Crohn's will make the Lyme worse and vice versa. And I'll show you the studies on low-dose naltrexone on how to control Herx's in some of these autoimmune reactions. Then there's elevated liver functions. So as an internist, you would normally think, well, I have to test people with a transaminitis for hemochromatosis, iron overload, Wilson's disease, copper overload, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, right? You keep thinking of all the differentials, but Lyme causes it. Rickettsial infections will cause it. Many of these co-infections, like BART, Babesia, they will all raise the liver functions, and many of the doctors are not looking for this. The fifth is pain syndromes. We've seen people be resistant to gabapentum, duloxetine, cymbalta, to some of the strongest neuropathic drugs, including morphine for pain. And once they're Lyme and Bartonella is treated, they get better. And there was a patient with chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy that Dr. Breischert was just talking about, who was on IVIG for one year, which costs about $1 million. And I got her off IVIG simply by treating her Babesia and her Bartonella and her nerve pain completely went away because Bartonella, Babesia, and Lyme were causing tremendous nerve pain. As a neurologist, very important to think about these multiple co-infections driving neuropathy. And finally, deconditioning. These patients are very sick for long periods of time in bed, and if you don't get them in a reconditioning program, many of them will not get better. So this is literally like going into a doctor's office with 16 nails in your foot saying to the doctor, doctor, I have foot pain. And the doctor finds one or two nails, pulls them out, and you go back and say, I still have foot pain. The doctor says, well, I've done everything I can. They didn't find all the nails. The 16-point map looking at 12,000 chronic Lyme patients in the last 27 years, this is what I found makes a difference clinically, and hopefully we will work with the Norwegian government creating clinics where you can evaluate this model for yourself, and you can see for yourself how effective this is in those patients who have been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and autoimmune diseases that in fact were driven by Lyme co-infections, heavy metals, and many of the things I'm going to talk to you about today.